Hey there everyone, Hatesh here and welcome to this small playlist about the AppRite. So in the last video, we discussed about the importance of having AppRite and such backend as a service. And in this video, we're going to be walking through that how we can install it. Now installation itself is divided into two parts. The first one being the local installation and the second one being installation on some cloud providers. Now one of the cloud provider, which I think that everybody should start with is going to be this one but uh, it's not compulsory to use this cloud provider that I'm using. You can use AWS, Azure, or any machine that you have. Now, in case you are using any such EC2 instance or something like that, then the best way is to install a Docker there. And then the commands are available on the app, right? Uh, GitHub profile that, hey, this is how you can actually go ahead and install it on any Unix. So these are the commands that are available to you, but after installing the Docker. Now, there are some other services available like ECS, the Elastic Container Service, and a bunch of others which you can utilize because it's a Docker container. But one of the great things which I like about it, if you scroll a little bit, there is a Git pod and there is a DigitalOcean. And that is the reason why I picked up to show you a demo of how easy it is to actually spin off a machine which has AppRite and is a production grade. Uh, you can use it fully in the production. It's just so simple. So this is your uh, DigitalOcean, and uh, these days DigitalOcean works absolutely fine with Visa cards as well, uh, hopefully. So you go ahead and give it a try. They have given me for a new account a $200 credit, which is for everyone. So go ahead, try that out. Now, what you want to do is make sure you just uh, create a new project. So once you click on the create new project, it looks like this. Uh, so there is nothing wrong there and nothing mysterious about that. It's just the first project that I've created. Now, we don't want to create anything from the managed database or something like that. We want to deploy AppRite, and there is a marketplace. So if you'll scroll a little bit here, you'll find that there is at the bottom known as marketplace. Click on it, and in this marketplace, a lot of configured uh, instances are there which you can utilize. For example, if I go ahead and say that I want to use AppRite, it's right up here. Just click on this, and you can create a droplet. So droplet is a vocabulary. Uh, just like we call this as a machine or EC2 instance, in the world of DigitalOcean, they like to call it as droplet. Fair enough. So just click on the droplet. Once you click on that, and by the way, you can find more information about what kind of machines and URLs and all these things. Uh, it is supported directly by the company. So good thing there. And then you simply have to select in what region you want to go ahead and work on with that. So in this case, let's go into Bangalore and we will be choosing everything default up here. So this looks good. And by the way, this says, hey, this is a basic machine. So you can choose a $56 per month of a machine. But for trying this stuff, you can go as low as $7 per month. You can choose the regular SDs as well, which has even a lower tier. Uh, you can choose even a $6. So go ahead and work on with that. So whatever suits to you, whatever the basic or whatever the bigger one you want to go for, maybe you want to handle a bit more of a load. So obviously choose a bit more heavier machine with 8 gigs RAM, 160 GB, uh, and 5 TB or transfer, which is fair enough. If you want to just try it out as a dev machine, you want to try it out things, but in the production grade level, not in the local instances, you go ahead and choose a regular disk of C uh, this type, or you can choose a premium one for just $1 extra. So I'll just choose premium Intel and it's $7 per month. Fair enough, not bad. And you have to actually select a password and this is where it comes to tricky. So uh, I'll just select a password here. So I'll be saying a password. Yeah, there's a lot of requirement, uh, like you have to select eight characters, one uppercase, God knows what. <laughs> so there's a lot. I'll just enter it one more time so that I know absolutely sure that I typed what I really wanted to type. So there we go. I don't want to enable any monitoring or something like that. Just want to create one, uh, one droplet of this. You can change the name as well in case you want. I will just use the default name. That is absolutely fine for me. And I'll just click on create droplet. And yes, it is that simple. You just select it from marketplace. By the way, in case you want, you can actually uh, choose a container uh, from the Docker as well and can work on with that. Now, this is going to take some time. It's not an instance process, instant process. It's going to take a couple of uh, seconds or minute. So I'll just pause the video here. And once the droplet is ready, I'll just resume the video then. All right, so it took just a couple of minutes, not much, and there we go, we have all things set up here. Now, one thing that you really need to know and understand that quickly go ahead and click on this link, and now it says, hey, uh, you can actually do a console, private IP, and whatnot. Uh, just click up here, uh, this is copied, so now this is really, really important step, you need to do it first. 
go up here and just go ahead and click on this. Now this means that AppRite is all installed. All you have to do is do a first sign up. Now this is a tricky process, uh, not in terms of complexity, it's just one time thing. Whoever comes to this IP first is going to be the root user or admin user of this one. So make sure you go ahead and quickly sign up. If somebody else signs up before you, uh, then just delete that droplet. You are the admin there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and say, hey, my name, and I'll just add up my email there. And I'll just add a password, so. And I'll just say, I'll register and I'll sign up. And nope, I don't want to save it. There we go. So once you get into this one, this is the first look of the app, right, that you're gonna get. The best part is this is running actually onto a production grade server. Now, in case you don't like this IP based thing, all you have to do is come back onto this droplet and go back onto the first project. There we go. And in a minute, it's going to load up and you can just click on these three triple dots and there is an option to uh, add a domain. Once you click on this, it will take you that add your enter your domain. This will be redirected here. That's it. Now you have an actual domain. So let's just say, for example, you have a domain, something like lco.dev or hiteshadri.com, maybe google.com. So you can just enter there. Uh, there are some more configuration in the DNS that will be shown to you in the next step. And that's it. That's all you have to do. So let's just say, for example, I have a domain lco.dev. I can just go ahead and add this domain. Now, surely I have to add some configurations and this was added to the first project. I have to add these A names, either these A records, just like this. So in case you are familiar with that, you can go ahead and do that. Otherwise, somebody in your team can actually go ahead and do that. Okay. Now, once we are here, this is the first time we create our project. You can create as many AppRite project as you wish. I'm going to go ahead and say, name it as YouTube. And uh, you don't need to add a project ID. It automatically adds one for you. But in case you want to add it, you can add it. And I'm going to go ahead and just create a project. And once you create this project, I will definitely talk more about this console because this is now new and improved version of it. And we are going to talk more about it. Now, the best part is, look at here. Let's just say you want to add AppRite into your uh, application that you are building, which is on the local host, or maybe somewhere you're using Codespace or something. Just click on add a web. So the web name, uh, let's just call this as YT. Uh, the local host could be exactly like this local host, or maybe you want to grab uh, this one up here. So this is uh, the app uh, host name. So I'll just add this one here. Make sure you don't add any HTTPS or something like that. And also read a little bit about the course. In case you want me, I can create a dedicated video of that, what is course and how it works. I'll just click on next. Then just simply npm install app right, grab app right as a client. Next, and this is the beauty about it. So your application, obviously, the client of AppRite is running on this IP, so it automatically gives you an endpoint, and it automatically gives you this end project ID as well. So all you gotta do is just click on this button, and it copies the code. Now you have a connection code, which actually just adds it up. Now it says cannot read properties undefined, so probably this is not working as of now. You can just click and copy. That, that's all you have to do and it will all work out of the box. I'll just click on next just for the sake of this. And once now you click on the dashboard, you'll see a different interface. This interface is much more useful compared to previous one because this will show you how much bandwidth you are consuming, how many requests to your application are coming up, uh, as well as the database consumption, the storage consumption, real-time connection, how many apps are actually using a real-time connection or subscribed to the event. So there's a lot more information now and you can definitely add more platform as you wish. Now, definitely in the upcoming videos, we'll have a discussion about how this auth looks like, what are the settings and everything, what is the database is available, how you can actually create and what is the use case of the functions. Storage is really basic. There is nothing too much there. There's just buckets or you can call them as folders. There are usage settings as well, so you can see a lot of. So in this version of AppRite, we have more information in the dashboard. We have more graphs and charts, which I absolutely love. So this is all the basics that you need to do to simply have an app right onto this one. Now, whenever next time you simply come up, either point your domain name, just enter this one, or you can just simply go ahead and uh, just go ahead and you can sign out to the account. So whatever suits to you best, uh, that's, that's all you have to work on. All the settings and options are available here. Personal project, your simply account settings are all up here. So hey, simply go ahead and use this one. So this was absolute basics of how app right could be installed into DigitalOcean. For the safety check or for simply the cleanup purpose, I'm going to click on destroy to show you that how you can destroy it. It's really simple. Just destroy this droplet. 
Yep, that's a really, really big name. I'll just copy this, paste this, and destroy this. So I told you, it's not really that much of a complex these days to simply deploy your application. As for just a $6 a month, you get the entire uh, control over everything that is going to happen. All the services bill, if you need to upgrade, you can actually do the upgrade. And it's not just here. Uh, there are a lot of things. One thing I would suggest to the entire AppRite team that if they could, uh, just like here, there's a nice documentation up here. If there could be a documentation or somebody who you can contribute into the open source, a documentation about how we can actually step-by-step -step guide of pushing this app right into uh, Amazon uh, ECS or maybe onto a EC2, that would be fantastic. I'll try my best to actually show you how that can be done in the future videos, but no promises on that part. In the next video, I will walk you through that how you can install app right onto your local machine. Maybe you don't want to do this, everything on the local host, so we'll cover that one as well. Once you are done with that, then we are going to go ahead and explore the documentation of app right. Hope you're enjoying this series. If yes, hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you up in the next video.